Hi everyone, I'm Adam Navis, joined as always by Liz Wade. Hello, Liz. Hi, Adam. We are here today to have a real conversation about our program, which I'm blanking on the name of, but it's about snap decisions. What is the name of this yeah, program? Can I help you? Yes, it please is do. How your quick decisions can change your life. Yes. So this because is because you don't know how how your quick you make quick decisions, but you don't know how they change your life. Exactly. You don't even know you make them. Um, ooh. So if you haven't listened to this program already, please listen to it on YouTube or our podcast or our website. And at all of those places, make sure that you um, really subscribe or dive into the website. Um, but we, I want to take a moment before we get into the program and tell you about our YouTube memberships. We are so excited about YouTube memberships. There's a little button that says join. Now, when you click that button, you're not actually joining. You're not committing to anything. It will just bring you to a page and tell you more about it. But we're offering special emojis, special content, exclusive deals, and, and just all sorts of fun stuff to take your English to the next level but also support us and be part of our channel and our community. So if you're on our website listening to this or through the podcast, make sure you visit our YouTube page because there's a lot of exciting things happening there. If you're already on our YouTube page, check it out. We'd love to have you join our community. Right? I miss anything? Yes. Good. Yes. Very you, you got exciting. it all. I got it all. Anyway, so quick decisions. We are no, So this program isn't about like, do you choose red or blue? Do you choose pizza toppings? It's about those decisions we make that are, um, that we don't think about, right? Yeah. Uh, it's like, a, so you're, you're not purposefully choosing something, it's more an instinct. Yes, you might not even know you're choosing it because of what you've learned, the things you've experienced. There's a, a very interesting, uh, the program kind of starts out with this idea of this statue that everybody thought yes. was really old, but then- Sorry, I love this story. Yes. It's so cool to me. So this, it, and and they, I think a museum paid quite a bit of money for it. Yeah, it's a very famous museum, a very big museum, and they got this um, very old, old statue. Yes. And when people, a lot of people saw it, their judgment. Well, not people, but like experts. Yes. So these are like experts in historical uh, art and yes. um, history. So they're, uh, when they saw it, they thought old and beautiful, ancient. But then someone came along and thought. Well, there were a, there were a few who did not think yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Well, I'm just saying there's, so there's one group of people who thought, oh, this is old. And then another people who just had a feeling their, their initial reaction or quick decision was that it wasn't like it, this is, this is before tests were run and before anyone was verified, they just knew. You're a, li you're a little bit wrong on here. No. Sorry. And I, a little bit wrong. So they did actually do tests on this statue. So they did tests on this statue. Experts said that it was old, but like a few people had some nagging feelings. Exactly. That's what I meant to Sorry. say. <laughs> I said <laughs> I some tests. tests. Like obviously the museum is not going to do no tests anyway. Well, what we're talking about today is those things that you think you know right away. But you're, and you, you might even be sure about, you might even be certain about, but you're actually wrong about. And so this is a fascinating thing because we all do it. It's yeah. unavoidable, right? There are ways we can, we can kind of check ourselves, but it's an unavoidable thing, which is why I think this is one of a very exciting spotlight program um, because no matter who you are, this, this will affect you. Yeah. And I, I do think it's important for us to say that this program is based on a book by the writer Malcolm Gladwell. And he wrote a book called Blink, where he tells um, a bunch of stories like this um, and how they actually impact your life, how your how your quick decisions, the the um instinctive decisions that you make without even thinking about it, 
how they impact your life. Um, so yeah, I think uh, to fin to finish. Did you finish the story of the of the? I didn't. No, statue? I didn't say. I didn't say what happened with if the statue was real. Yeah. So this one scientist, right? He gets this feeling. He looks at the statue and he doesn't. He doesn't. Well, he, he usually gets an idea that like a word that comes to him when he looks at a, at an old piece of art, which is like old or marble or heavy or ancient or whatever. And so this time he looked at it and he thought fresh. And so he and some other uh, art experts insisted on more tests and they found out it was a fake. A very good right. fake. His quick decision was yeah. right. His snap yeah. judgment. Well, in snap, which is a very short, you know, you take, you snap your fingers. That's so a very quick decision. Um, snap de decisions are very important. They keep us safe, right? right? They tell us uh, sometimes you make decisions about things that help keep you safe, that help you know, help you navigate just a normal day. But right. our experience is limited. And that is, all of these decisions are based on our experience. So if we meet someone new, meet someone who speaks a different language or from a different culture, wearing different clothes, we make immediate decision or immediate judgments about them. Right. And they're not usually correct. Because... Right. If until we have a lot of different experiences, those decisions are based on fear or a, a small sample of experiences. So, right. Liz, I don't know if you've ever had this where you've. Do you think you've ever changed your mind about something because of experience? I don't know if I um, could come up with a specific example where. I do, actually. Um, so I don't know if this exactly counts, but um, when I was in eighth grade, so this is a long time ago, right? Okay. Uh, there was a new girl who started riding our bus. And I thought when she first got on the bus, she's not very nice. She like looks mean. I'm not going to talk to her. Yeah. I'm a little sad about that now, right? Um, and so I didn't give her a chance. I just made a snap judgment that she wasn't a person that I wanted to be a friend with. But then, um, as, as we rode the bus together, I mean, it's not like she sat next to me or anything, but as we rode the bus together, I do remember thinking, um, further on in my eighth grade year, like I really made a wrong judgment about her at the beginning i mean it's not like we were best friends but she yeah. was a nice person and yeah. um i enjoyed talking to her and uh yeah she was a nice person and so yeah. i like i do have a very clear memory of that in eighth grade where i remember thinking back thinking i made the wrong decision about her and that wasn't fair wow well that's impressive that even when you were in eighth grade you were able to reflect on that i think a lot of people just stay in their own idea uh, yeah. of of i you know i've had it with some i think trying new foods um right. or visiting new places uh but i also think maybe you and i have traveled more than other people and so when you travel when you have a general posture of oh the world is an interesting place it's more complex yeah. than then I would think you generally have an openness to, um, to your snap to like fully landing and thinking that you you actually know what you know. Right. Well, I was thinking of this as you were as you were talking about it a few minutes ago. I was thinking of taking it even a step back. So, hmm. like for example, when you know we have known each other for I don't know a couple years, year over more than a couple years. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, however many years. Yeah. Um, but I think if I made like if you maybe if we met for coffee, right? right. And I was at the coffee shop and I saw you walk in. I might have a snap judgment about you. Like mm. Adam looks like he's had a hard day yeah. or um, Adam looks really happy for some reason. And mm. I and I would be able to have an accurate or a 
a good snap judgment because we have that oh yeah so you would so, be able to um your your judgment would be more likely to be accurate right? right that's what you're saying yeah right so i think it's an interesting like the people that you know when you have a snap judgment or a quick decision a, an instinct about someone that you are close to maybe your child um or your mm -hmm. mother or father or you know a close aunt or uncle or something um, you might have a a good snap judgment about them. Ooh. But then if you think about that for the other way, like when you encounter a stranger, when you meet a stranger, um, when you have a snap judgment about them, yeah, that's not right because you don't know them. So here is an even more complicated. So one of the difficult things that I, I think would be to to have the people you know, let's say you walked in and I think, oh, I can tell Liz is having a, a bad day. Okay. Two things could happen. One, if I just say, oh, Liz, you're having a bad day. Maybe you mm -hmm. are having a bad day. And maybe you, um, but maybe I've just taken away the value of you getting to say that. Or you getting to tell mm -hmm. me that you had a bad day. Well, you don't have to like say, are you having a bad day? You could just maybe say, you know, like, how are you? Which is something you'd normally say. Right. Well, or... that's, my, that's my point. My point is we still want to, I think what it does is it helps us prepare to receive, to better prepare ourselves to receive what they're going to be. Mm. But it doesn't right, mean yes. that we need to not let them say what they're going to say or not let them express what they're going to express because right. maybe we're still wrong. And that can be really hard when, cause I, I've been married for a long time and I still misread my wife from time to time. <laughs> and, and she's like, Oh, that, that's <laughs> not what I meant. Um, yeah. And that can be really hard. So sometimes it's with a stranger, it's actually easier to say, I don't know what they're thinking. So you stay yeah, open. That's true. But with people as long you as know, you're open to not knowing what they're thinking, because right. sometimes, you know, if you have a quick decision, um, you know, I will I will say we have been doing this series on 10 ways to fight hate. Mm. And a lot of these uh, problems with um, hate, not, you know, not not liking someone just because yeah. of who they are. That really does come from a lot of these prejudices or these snap decisions yeah. Uh, that are not based in reality. Exactly. So, so staying um, open is just a, a great way of, right. you know, to individuals, but also groups, also just experiences. And I think, mm -hmm. I think that is one of the things that um, you can't avoid snap judgments, but that's the big right. thing you can do to kind of make sure you like, am I making a snap judgment? Can I, can I pause and second and think it, think it a second time? Can right. I can I ask someone else, hey, this is my judgment. Can I, you know, who are the people in your life who you can trust? But, right. Yeah. Well, um, okay, so I want to ask a question, yes. and then I want to bring up another point. Okay. Okay? So I think it would be interesting um, to ask if any of our listeners, if you're listening to this, leave a comment below. Like, have you ever made a snap judgment or a, or a quick decision that you, that was right or wrong? Uh, that you found mm. out or um or yeah, has someone like how... made a snap judgment about you yes oh yeah that's an interesting one too um the next one the thing i wanted to bring up is i thought was really interesting in this program it brings up um the fact that doctors like especially maybe mm. emergency doctors depend on their snap judgments in order to do their work right right so they need to have those snap judgments. So we've been talking about uh, snap judgments in kind of a negative way, right? right? Where we have an opinion about someone before we've really met them. But they are actually important uh, in in some specific areas, yeah. right? So these emergency room doctors, they might not, uh, they might have a feeling of what is wrong with you or what they can do to help even if they... Um, don't have all of the information yet yeah. or even some you know doctors if you have if you come presenting sort of a, a 
something that's wrong with you, but nobody can figure it out, they might have a gut feeling. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good question. Do you trust your gut feeling or not? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, because that's, I mean, that's essentially what a, what a snap judgment or a quick decision is. It's a, it's a gut feeling, yeah, right? And, and, and that, it, that's an interesting idiom, too. Like a gut feeling is just sort of a, a feeling that you have. Yeah. I don't, does it come from your stomach? I don't yeah. Know. Well, you, you can sometimes you can feel it down there. You get like clenches yeah. up. Like it's like, <sighs> yeah. Yeah. You feel it in your body rather than like, well, I think it's this way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's that... true. So, um, yeah, the talking about the uh, the jobs that have to maybe you are a person who has to make uh, snap judgments in your work. I would yeah. love to hear about that, about yeah. what you do. That that's great. So put that in the comments on this video or on our website, uh, wherever or on social media. You can you can send us a message through Twitter or Facebook. Whatever works for you, we try to be there and be available. But again, um, join us for, uh, if you subscribe on YouTube, and you'll join us for our next conversation. We try to do these uh, at least once a week, and we have fun doing them. And um, yeah, hit that little bell so you don't miss out on, on all our content. And uh, Liz, it's been a pleasure as always. And you too, Adam. Thank you. And so until next time, we hope you listen, watch, practice, and learn. Spotlight out. Mm -hmm.